now comes Jude. And here's some interesting facts about Jude because Jude begins his book by calling himself a servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James. He greets with mercy and peace and then he teaches us three major lessons. The first lesson he teaches us is you need to first of all watch your atmosphere. Look at somebody say watch your atmosphere. He puts us in the posture because if you're going to read the book of Jude, he teaches us you need to start off by watching your atmosphere. He gives a historical account of the danger of certain men who crept in unawares, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the, the only Lord God, Jesus Christ. He reminds them that God has dealt already with their main enemies talk to somebody say God has already dealt with your enemies sometimes you fight the battle you already won sometimes you're supposed to wait and see what God's going to do and understand that God has already headed you out to, to, to take care of some situations in there in your particular life and so in the scripture we see some things pop out from the beginning he teaches us in the sixth verse there Jude there's only one page right before revelation he teaches us that there were angels who left their first estate. He teaches us the trauma and the difficulty that happened with Sodom and Gomorrah which we have minimized it just to being a particular behavior but the deal is, is that Sodom and Gomorrah is attached very much to uh, the words burning and your own lust. The whole deal is, is that anytime you burn in your lust you're going to burn up. And so he tells you you got to handle your own situations. Somebody talk to your neighbor and say handle your own situation. He discussed this with, the, with these filthy dreamers who defiled the flesh and despised dominion, speaking evil of dignities. They talked like the angels of God did not have authority and that God was not really with what was happening in the spirit world. He reminds us that even when Michael, the archangel, contended with the devil, he had to dispute over the body of Moses and that he did not rail the devil with accusation. But when Michael was fighting against the devil he didn't argue with the devil or keep score of all the stuff the devil did that's what we do too often when we want to get our point we argue with folk and keep score so we can have something to argue about he just simply looked at the devil and said the Lord rebuke you <laughs> and every once in a while what you need to do is just go ahead and say the Lord rebuke you <laughs> rather than trying to count the situations with the enemy it makes sense for you to stand up and go ahead and just deal with with what you're facing and what you're dealing with and talk directly to your enemy and say the Lord rebuke you don't think you're doing that in my life don't think you're doing that in my family don't think you're doing it in my situation the Lord rebuke you you got to learn how to talk to the enemy talk to your neighbor say you got to learn how to talk to the enemy you don't play with him you don't need to track his history you don't need to talk about all he's done what you need to do is tell him where he's going the Bible says submit yourself therefore unto God resist Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Somebody out of shout glory right there. He reminds us then in this is that God has already dealt with our main enemies. Somebody help me preach and tell your neighbor God has already dealt with your main enemies. I love it because the Bible says in Genesis 49 and 10, he says the scepter or the reign of power, the instrument of authority shall not depart from Judah uh, rulership or the lawgiver from between his feet or righteous judgment until Shiloh comes, the Messiah shows up. And so he warns us by saying here, you got to watch, hallelujah, talk to somebody, say, you got to watch it, yeah. You got to watch your atmosphere, say it in here, watch your atmosphere because when, after you get through watching your atmosphere you got to then turn around and not just look at what's around you you got to look at who's with you so the second thing you need to watch is watch your company somebody say watch your company I'm just going through the book of Jude. If you got the page, you can just look at it. I'm going right down the book of Jude because by the time you get to the next part in the book of Jude here, he tells you there were three spirits that showed up. And he tells us you got to watch your company here because ministry will bring you unsolicited attacks and you will at least have to deal with some things you did not contend or think you would have to deal with. And so he says, watch your, uh, watch your company. And he talks about three particular spirits 
spirits. One was the spirit of Cain. The other one was the spirit of Balaam. And the last one was the spirit of Korah. He speaks, he goes back in history. And I love the way that the Bible does this because uh, the Bible steps back sometime to bring us up uh, into what we need to know for where we go, where we're going next. Notice the text here. He says, first of all, you got to watch your, you got to watch the spirit of Cain. Somebody say the spirit of Cain. Because the spirit of Cain is a brother killing spirit. We, we have to break that spirit that blends and mixes jealousy and comparison with. You got, we got to break that up. We got to break that up with people who always contend with issues and matters with other people who can't get along with nobody. I mean, and people who pick and choose who they like and who they don't like based upon situations they find themselves in and who rather move off of weaknesses rather than off of strengths. You rather you need somebody in your life who can talk to you about where you are and where you're going and that you can get excited about what God is doing. And so that brother killing spirit is, is that I don't like you spirit without reason, without right. This whole spirit that says you think you better than I am. That kind of disposition where ultimately it puts power behind weaknesses and that's really not good. I'd rather push you to getting better than tell you how bad you are <laughs> and nobody wants anybody sitting back taking score on all their mistakes so they can bring them up later you want listen you want some people who love you enough to say listen here i know you blew it we all blew it but after we get through with this we're about to get better look at not you go and tell somebody i'm about to get better i'm not gonna let you put me down just because i blew it i am flesh i was my messed up i did do some stuff yeah and i was guilty but the grace of god <laughs> but the mercy of God what brought me out I mean when I look at how deep I was it was from sinking sand that he lifted me it was tender hands that he lifted me from planes of light oh my God uh, uh, to, to all kinds of opportunities God lifted me and he gave me another chance somebody had to give your neighbor a high five and say I thank God for another chance so, so go ahead in the room and look at somebody and say break it <laughs> break that spirit uh, break that that brother killing spirit but then the second spirit there was the spirit of Balaam somebody say Balaam I try to on y'all to know this it was just a few months ago that I that I preached this message and dealt with Balaam and the donkey and that issues but understand Balaam is not a brother killing spirit Balaam is a uh, is a deception spirit it is a trap setting spirit somebody say trap setting spirit it is folk who are hanging around I said, watch your company now. Hang around and set traps for you. Playing with your future. It is those who seek to get you to forfeit your own destiny. They know something is not good for you, but they rather than see you excel, bring you back down to make sure that they have an opportunity to keep you from progressing and getting where you need to be. you got to discern your atmosphere. Come on, talk to somebody. Say, discern your atmosphere. <laughs> because you may be sharing space with your own personal hint and hater you got to make sure you make sure that whoever's on your side is doing what they need to do tell your neighbor say I ain't got time for a hinderer and a hater I gotta break that thing I gotta make sure that they don't have any authority in my life I gotta make sure that I have opportunity to be and do what God has called me to do and some of them come up so subtle and so kind and so nice and so beguiling but at the but behind them they're ravening wolves they're seeking to destroy everything you stand for and willing to mess up your future at the drop of a hat and somebody ought to say they got to go somebody ought to hear matter of fact you got to put in your mind not only do they need to leave my life not only do they need to leave my family they need to leave my atmosphere they need to leave my sisters and my brothers in Christ they need to leave my faith they need to leave my church I want some folk who are not trying to mess up and devour those who God has set up to be blessed somebody shout glory in here one more here, here, here. There is the spirit of Cain. There's the spirit of Balaam. And then there's the third one. There's the spirit of Korah. Somebody say Korah here. This is an, an 
anarchy spirit here. It is a manipulative, uh, private, organizational type of spirit. This is the one who's in your camp here. It's one, they're not, st they're not straight out like Cain. They're not sneaky like Balaam, but they are an they're an organizer within your circle that privately promotes a, a spiritual comparison with you. These are the ones who always look to judge whether you right or wrong. They got opinions about everything you do. They don't even like what you wear. They can't stand what you do. You do something new. They got some comment. Oh, I don't like that shirt. Oh, he shouldn't have wore that with that. What? That you? Did you hear anything I said? You were looking at my clothes. I was trying to get you to see what the word of God was saying. These are the people here who match you up, measure you up, look at you, feel, figure out in their minds that they already know who you are about what they think they know about life. And I came to tell you, they try to judge you based upon their imaginations and also their own errors, their issues and their matters and their circumstances they're familiar with that drop them into the opportunity to have an opinion without facts. And so they use that as the right to try to destroy who you are. But you got to turn around and say, Cora, you got to get up out of here. Somebody had to holler, Cora! <laughs> get up out of here. Hallelujah. They seek to criticize and not to forgive. <laughs> they like to tear up but not restore. <laughs> they don't like to build up but tear down and replace who you are for where you are. And you got to let Cora go. I'm just talking about what Jews talking about here. Because Jews say it's a lot of issues you got to pay attention to while you watching your company. Talk to your neighbor and say, you got to watch your company. Mm -hmm. You see, you'll have this if you lead. But not only if you lead, you'll see this if you hang around real leaders. <laughs> you want you to know that you're going to have to contend for the faith. Which takes us to the next part of this particular book. I'm almost at our text here. And you see, Jude wants us to know that even with all of this, you can understand. You have to watch. Look at your name and say, watch. You've got to watch your atmosphere. You've got to watch your company. But you also better watch your own faith. <laughs> You've got to manage your hope. Look at your name and say, manage your hope. Jude wants us to know here that no matter how bad it looks, in the 20th verse, he says, you can build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I love that part. Somebody say praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, those who know what I'm talking about, y'all can get with me right away. Because sometimes praying in the Holy Ghost is the only thing take you through. Because sometimes you don't have words to give you for where you're trying to go. You just need to go ahead and release and let God have his way. Keeping yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy.